No, it's nothing but God can pull you out of when you don't know where your next situation is going to be, where your next job is going to be. And then you look, you stay here today and you look back like, did I just go through all that? Focus on the negative. Um, and if you only focus on what we don't have, you will forget what he's done. You'll be reminded of who he is. You'll be reminded of who he is. And my eight-year-old said, it's not your car, it's God's car. <laughs> and run across the country. I should have been so grateful. I didn't come from an educated family. I should have just been grateful, like, I'm in college. But instead, I focused on what I didn't have. You know what I focused on what I didn't have? A wife. <laughs> Is the married people like, ah! <laughs> the single people are like, what? what's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> so miserable. My life is hard, guy. While I'm playing college basketball, majoring in sports medicine. I believe are important elements, but I encourage you. There's so much more. Go study it. I'm not going to cover it all. I encourage you in your small groups, in your personal time, go study it. What we're going to do is we're going to work backwards from the book of Leviticus. Some of you, when you start reading your Bibles, you go to Genesis and you're trying to skip Leviticus, right? We're going to be in it. And we're going to look at chapter 23. We're going to go backwards with a different feast. And we're going to end on the first feast, but we're going to end on Easter, the Passover feast. Today we're going to talk about the Feast of the Booths. This is called, in, in Jewish culture, um, Sukkot. Sukkot was first used when, when um, in Genesis, you see that there was a Sukkot built for housing animals. Sukkot, it's, a, it's a homemade shift. It's a place of covering, a dwelling place. In fact, even today in the Jewish culture, um, they will still practice this. They would have this Feast of Booth occasion, and they will practice it. And typically, you can even see it here in Arizona. This. They make this homemade tent, and you would see them today in Phoenix, and, and they would have to live in this tent for seven days. It was a time to remember. It was a time to remember what God had done in their lives, a time to remember that he had forgiven them, a time to remember. It was a time for them to pause long enough for seven days. And I'm going to read this text to you, and I'm just going to throw a number out there. In 700 years, here's what's going to happen. And you're thinking, That's guy, that guy's crazy. They put it in writings, and they record the sermon. 700 years from now, you're like, he was right. It's kind of like this. So hundreds of years before Jesus um, Moses got this word in, in, in years, years, generations. So this was important that it got passed on to generation to generation so that everybody knew what God had done. For example, when I bring my kids in and say, we're going to share with you what God has done for mom and dad. We're going to share with you what mom, how mom and dad got saved. We're passing on God's goodness to our generations. They were doing the same thing. God, to get them to do that. And as they were praising him, and you can see through the top, they would remember three things in this tent. For seven days, praising and remembering three things. Number one, they just came out of Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement. So they were just celebrating the fact that God has forgiven them of their sins. I want you to dance. They would dance and celebrate uh, this because of the harvest that God had given them. Also representing that harvest that's to come with Christ. But this, this they would celebrate. There's the courtyards. There's the Levitical priests. The Levitical priests were like their worship pastors. Everybody is celebrating the water for the plantation and the fruits. The next one is they would use blood. This is wine as a form of sacrifice. So here's what would happen. They would come in and you would see the water pour down. Water, God pour your spirit. God give, pour your blessing over us. You would see this as the sacrifice in the blood. And here they are, and they're celebrating, and everybody is cheering. They're ex Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Listen to verse 3. With, you, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. This word salvation here in the Hebrew means Yeshua. From, listen again, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of Yeshua. So what he is saying here, as they're reading this, Jesus is saying, I am the one you are celebrating. Oh God. And he had this plan all along. He said, while you're waiting, 
I'm already here.